Hello everyone, welcome to Enbreezen, the daily current affairs news analysis by Team Enlight. Today, the topics for discussion are the Legislative Councils, Deputy Speaker, Mars 2020 Mission, Durand Line and certain terms for discussion like Balance of Trade and Balance of Payments. So the first topic for today is Legislative Councils. Why was this in news? The Maharashtra government hopes to complete the nomination process to fill 12 vacancies in the Legislative Council. So first of all, let's know what's the Legislative Council. In India, we have a bicameral system of legislature, that is we have a lower house and an upper house. At the centre, we are having the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. And in the states, we have the Legislative Council and the Legislative Assembly under the Article 169 of the Constitution. The states which are having the Legislative Council currently are Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Jammu and Kashmir also previously had a Legislative Council which was abolished under the JNK Reorganization Bill 2000, uh, th Reorganization Act 2019. So next is about the abolition and creation of the Legislative Council. So the parliament can abolish or create it by a simple majority. This is to be remembered. Uh, that is the majority of the members of each house of uh, of each house present and voting, which is done in concern with when the legislative assembly passes a resolution to that effect by special majority. And by special majority, we mean that majority of the total mem membership of the assembly and majority of not less than two thirds of the members of the assembly present and voting. This is important to remember from prelims point of view. Next we come to the composition under article 171 of the constitution. The LC shall not have more than one third of the total strength of the state assembly and not less than 40 members. This is not valid for a union territory. A union territory may have lesser number of members also. Then next is that LC is a continuing chamber like the Rajya Sabha. It is a permanent body. The tenure of each member is six years and one third of the members retire every two years. The next is the composition. So one twelfth of the members come from the graduates, one twelfth from teachers, then one by third from the local bodies, one third by the assembly members and uh, the remaining are nominated by the governor of the state. Uh, now we will go on to the mains perspective from this topic that is comparison with the Rajya Sabha. So the legislative power of these councils are very limited whereas the Rajya Sabha has a lot of powers uh, especially in the non-financial legislations which is not so with the legislative council. Then assembly the uh, that is the legislative assembly can override the suggestions or the amendments made by the legislative council which is not so by the uh, which cannot be done similarly by the Lok Sabha in the case of Rajya Sabha. Next the members of the Rajya Sabha that is the uh, take part in the election for the president and vice president which is not so with the members of the legislative council. Also the vice president is the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha whereas there is no post for a vice governor in the state. So next we come to why do we need a second house? Uh, the first point is that to check any hasty actions by the popularly elected house. Secondly, there might be individuals who cannot go through the cutout for the rough and tumble of the direct elections and uh, are unable to hence contribute to the legislative process. So in order to include people from various fields like science, arts, literature, etc., we have nominated members which can be part of the legislative council. Then having a second chamber would allow for more debate and also sharing of work between the houses. But more often than not, it has lot of arguments against it and uh, the legislative councils have not been able to perform the work they were actually determined to. It is because uh, it is acting as a parking lot for the second class politicians that is to accommodate party functionaries who uh, fail to get elected to the state legislative assembly. Then it is unnecessary drain on the exchequer. It, uh, it has no power similar to Rajya Sabha, for example, in terms of amendments, non-financial powers, veto powers, etc. As regards to money bill, it can only delay it for 14 days. But other than that, nothing else can be done by the Legislative Council in terms of money bill. So here it's the syllabus linkages. So next topic for today is the Deputy Speaker. 
So why was this in news? So recently, the Delhi High Court has asked the centre to explain its stand on the petition filed in regards with, keep, uh, with the centre keeping the post of Deputy Speaker vacant, which in the petition has been said is a violation of Article 93 of the Constitution. So uh, the, who is the Deputy Speaker? The Deputy Speaker under Article 19 uh, is provided under the Article 19 of the Constitution. Then next is comparison with the speaker. So there is no need for the deputy speaker to resign from its original party to become a deputy speaker, though it must stay impartial. Next, the roles and functions of the deputy speaker. It acts as the presiding officer in case of leave or absence caused by death or illness of the speaker of the Lok Sabha. Then uh, it also has the privilege of casting votes similar to the speaker in case of a tie. One special privilege of the deputy speaker is that Whenever it is appointed as a member of a parliamentary committee, he or she will automatically become the chairman of that particular committee. So history of the two positions, that is the speaker and deputy speaker, they both originated in 1921 under the provisions of the Government of India Act of 1919, which were also known as the montague Chelmsford reforms. Next, the election procedure. The, it is elected in the first meeting of the Lok Sabha after the general elections from amongst the members of the Lok Sabha. So by convention from the 11th Lok Sabha, the position of the deputy speaker is op uh, offered to the opposition party in India. Tenure and the removal. They hold office until either they cease to be a member of the Lok Sabha or they resign. They can be removed by their office by resolution passed by the Lok Sabha by an effective majority of its members. This is important to remember. Now let's move on to the third topic for today, that is Mars 2020 mission. So recently, uh, the NASA Mars rover Perseverance has collected rock samples from Mars and, uh, and it has sent them back to the Earth. So about the mission, it was designed to better understand the geology of the Mars and seek signs of ancient life on the Mars planet. The objectives were to assess the ancient habitability of the planet and also demonstrate the technology for futuristic robotic and human exploration. So the steps in the mission were basically, first of all, to collect uh, the sample of the rock, soil, etc. and uh, seal them and leave them on the ground. Then fetch this uh, with the help of uh, uh, the fetch rover, that is the Mars fetch rover. Next is the transfer of these with the help of the Mars ascent vehicle, which will meet the orbiter and last return the orbiter will carry these samples back to the Earth. So about the Perseverance rover, it is different from the previous ones as it is capable of drilling and collecting core samples of the most promising rocks and soils and setting them aside in a cache on the surface of the Mars. So the landing site will be the G0 crater, uh, the crater. The power source for this particular rover is a multi-mission radio isotope thermoelectric generator which converts heat from the natural radioactive decay of plutonium into electricity and next important uh, fact about this is that it will carry the Ingenuity which is the first ever helicopter to fly on the Mars. Over here in this diagram you can see the different instruments which will be carried by this Perseverance rover and uh, what are the works each of these particular instruments uh, would be performing in brief. So over here, I have mentioned briefly some details about Mars. If some question is asked uh, in the uh, exam regarding Mars um, during in the mains, you can put certain facts from here. So next is India's Mars mis Orbiter mission, that is the MOM or the Mangalyaan. It was launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Station in Andhra Pradesh, uh, and it was launched by the ISRO. The next is that it was launched on PSLV C-25 rocket with the aim of studying the Martian surface and the mineral composition as well as to scan its atmosphere for methane, an indicator of life on Mars. So these are certain important facts since the Mars uh, mission of NASA is in the news. Then what are the reasons for frequent missions to the Mars? So first of all, the planet is very similar to Earth and we feel that there would be some signs of life over the Mars. Then it has a thick atmosphere which may enable the stability of water on the surface of the Mars. Uh, then it is the most suitable amongst other planets 
since venus and mercury are very hot and uh, they have extreme temperatures so nothing can survive over there also the uh, planets of the outer solar system are made up of gas and not rock so it is difficult for uh, mine uh, you know miniature life to survive over there hence mars has adequate temperatures for uh, some form of life to survive and hence the interest in mars so let's move on to the last topic for today that is the durand line so why was it in news uh, the new pashtun dominated taliban government which has come up in afghanistan is going to give its stance on the durand line so what is this durand line it is the international border between the afghanistan and the pakistan it was fixed by the british civil servant sir henry mortimer durand and uh, then afghan emir that is abdur rahman khan in 1893 this is important to remember so next uh, it was accepted as the then indo afghan border it cuts through the pashtun uh, homelands of the region and it divides the ethnic pashtuns and the baloch on both sides of the border the line uh, the durand line is around 2430 kilometers uh, long and uh, currently the modern state of afghanistan does not accept this line that is important to remember some other importance uh, importance of durand line is that it was important uh, important uh, for the british empire uh, in terms of afghanistan it kept uh, the russian army at check for the britishers then uh, british it also led to the uh, basically it was important from the british interest in the central asia it acted uh, afghanistan acted as a buffer state between the russia and the british india so next over here uh, what are the different problems with the durand line so it is not accepted by the afghan posh pashtuns it was arbitrary and illogical similar to the radcliffe line which british had made in india uh, to divide india and pakistan and it had led to division of several villages and families uh it was seen as a tactic by the british to weaken the pashtuns by dividing them on both side of the durand line so this is important to remember and also it led to strategically important that is the khyber pass to stay on the side of the british india so next is india's stake in the durand line so india has a small claim in this border line at the pakistan occupied kashmir area also this is this border is deemed as one of the most dangerous in modern times because it is famous for drug trafficking kidnapping general lawlessness and it also acts as a feeder area for larger golden crescent and it is one of the uh, you know major drug trafficking networks in the world so also this line becomes important from the recent developments which have taken place in afghanistan that is the uh, rise of the taliban government and uh, hence it is important from the internal security and uh, organized crimes part of the upsc syllabus for india so next over here i have briefly mentioned about the anglo afghan wars if one is interested they can go through these uh, i will not be discussing them uh, during this session next is the great games so where this term comes for it is also known as the bolshaya igra it was the intense rivalry between the british and the russian empires in the central asia beginning in the 19th century which continued through 1907 and uh, to it was basically to bring in the influence or control much of central asia to uh, buffer the crown jewel of the british empire that is the british india next another related uh, thing is the durand football tournament which is also known as the durand cup so it is the annual domestic football competition in india which was first held in 1888 in shimla this is the oldest existing football tournament in asia and third oldest one in professional club football tournaments in the world it was uh, started by sir mortimer durand in shimla in 88 1888 when he was recovering from illness in shimla it was basically started when he became conscious of the value of sports uh, in order to maintain one's health so next uh, the terms for discussion so the first term for discussion is balance of trade which is uh, recently being mentioned in the newspapers uh, in the economic section so it is the difference between the value of a country's exports and the value of a country's imports for a given period the balance of trade is the largest component of a country's balance of payments next is what is balance of payments 
So basically, it summarizes all transactions that a country's individuals, companies, government bodies complete with individuals, companies and government bodies of outside the country. These transactions consist of imports, exports of goods, services, capital as well as transfer payments uh, such as the foreign aid and remittances. So this is all for today. Thank you for listening to us and have a great day ahead. Thank you.